we will immediately start uh, with a presentation about how to actually transform a system or a teaching system or a particular school into digital one. This is probably the central topic of uh, of today. So I uh, I invite Adam Sirovatka and Roman Veraška from Unicorn uh, to describe this transformation for us. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you, David. Okay. And good afternoon, everybody. Uh, nowadays, schools, just as any other organizations, companies, or even individuals, are facing some very difficult challenges. The key, let's say, concepts and principles which were valid for decades are becoming to be, let's say, obsolete or not usable for the uh, current world and the way how we are now as people, students or teachers used to work or function. And the key solution for this will be the digital transformation. My name is Adam Sirvatka. I work at Unicorn and I'm responsible for online applications in digital education, web authoring and reservation systems. My name is Roman Veyroška and I'm working in Unicorn as well and I'm responsible for Project Educate. A few words about Unicorn. We are a renowned European company. We are basically uh, developing software solutions for more than 30 years now. Uh, the fun fact is that Unicorn was established in 1990, which is the same year as uh, I was born. So I guess that makes me a millennial, while uh, Roman will be representing boomer yeah. <laughs> generation. <laughs> and our products are basically designed for Generation Z, yeah. or that depends on the English use. Uh, most people may uh, connect Unicorn with some uh, solutions for uh, large enterprises, like for banking, energy, utilities, you know. And uh, Adam, why we are on education conference when we are doing the, the software for uh, banking and um, energy mm -hmm. sef uh, segment? Well, the reason is that uh, we have around like uh, 2,500 co-workers, something like that. And the only way how we are able to actually develop all the software and the solutions is to educate them. So when we actually wanted to educate our people, we found out, well, we need to be in this domain, in this business. And by the way, we also have a university as well in the holding. So uh, what is like uh, today's agenda? Yeah, uh, we would like to talk uh, about uh, the most important troubles in the digital transformation, uh, which we've seen in the technology gap uh, between the student and the teacher, uh, what uh, the distance and the hybrid learning uh, bring the challenges uh, to the education, uh, what's important uh, for the switching from the paper to digital, and um, there is a real need for systematic solution because the teachers are unable to do it themselves. Uh, they have to have uh, some computer assisted help uh, for, uh, for that process. So what we can see as a technological gap, and uh, it's obvious for everyone, uh, that uh, the teacher are coming, as, a, as Adam said on the very beginning, uh, from the different generation uh, than the students, but uh, nowhere uh, in the history was so visible uh, that uh, uh, really enormous difference between the two generations. One generation used the PC, email, and the paper tools, and the new generation is using the mobile phones, apps, online gaming, and uh, that uh, those groups cannot, uh, even they are using the electronic way of communication, they cannot communicate to each other, and uh, there must be found uh, the way how to, uh, how to make them or put them in the, in the one circle. Uh, distance and hybrid learning, um, uh, there was a lot of challenges uh, when uh, the teachers need to, uh, to work with. Uh, from one day to another, um, it was in most countries uh, across the world, uh, the teachers need to work digital only. So it was something very um, confusing for them and uh, some of them has been prepared for but some of them not and uh, there was a really big difference especially for the 
even the generation of teachers can differ because there can be the younger teachers and the older teachers and uh, especially the older teachers with a uh, lack of no IT knowledge was uh, in the very difficult situation for that uh, uh, for the digital learning. Uh, there was definitely missing the methodology because nobody was even thinking that uh, there will be the full distance learning. Uh, who was thinking about that was the Unicorn University but not all the all the standard elementary and the high schools across the world. Uh, there was uh, real troubles with the hardware and, uh, and the connectivity uh, which uh, every teacher face with and uh, because uh, they have to work not from their normal environment was the school but uh, they was working from home and uh, the homes was not prepared for that. Uh, the students have um, the challenges as well but absolutely different challenges because they can use uh, the technology, they can use the, uh, all the tools uh, but uh, they was not somehow compatible with the teachers and uh, um, what uh, we realized that the teachers uh, in one school they used the different communication channels and uh, it was really confusing for the students uh, just to see um, yeah I uh, received from one teacher uh, information on WhatsApp uh, second teacher sent me an email and the third teacher used the learning management system and another one is uh, just giving me the papers. So basically uh, you're saying that it's a mess and yeah. it's organi organized and uh, there is some system missing in this. Yeah, that's right. And some systematic help for uh, for the teachers uh, because um, they cannot do it themselves and uh, they combina uh, combine different tools. Uh, they try to find which tool is more suitable for, for that way. Uh, but uh, actually um, it's not a perfect combination for the, for the distance or hybrid learning. Mm. So uh, another challenge we which is in front of schools, uh, it's a switching from paper to digital. We can see it everywhere. Uh, we can see it not only in the Czech Republic, we can see it in Germany, uh, we can see it in other countries uh, that uh, the schools are still very dependable on the paper. Yeah. So they used to print, they used to copy, they used to uh, comment the uh, the homework on the paper and um, then uh, this switch uh, it's really necessary and again uh, just to converting the document from the paper form to the digital form it's not the way. Yeah. So there must be something that the document has to be converted in the digital document and there must be the workflow behind and to work with the document in a new way. By the way, it's funny that you're mentioning that Germany is still dependent on paper yep. because that makes, you know, it's very un unecological, right? Yeah. It, it creates like another carbon debt. Yeah, and, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah that's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it was the real example that uh, the schools in Germany uh, just distributed uh, I, I don't want to name any because uh, it will be not fair for them uh, but they distributed the homeworks on Friday on paper and the next Friday they're collecting them uh, back yeah. and uh, that's a reality and uh, many of other schools are doing the same uh, because simply the switching from the paper to digital uh, was very very difficult for them or almost impossible. Mm. So we are talking about uh, missing methods of digitalization, um, still the um, uh, local out authorities, uh, uh, they required documents on the paper. Uh, it's uh, currently changing in the Czech Republic. Ministry of Education, it's allowing the school to use the elect electronic version only. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to fo focus the, um, uh, on the long-term archives. Yeah. So the long-term archives are still not uh, treated as a digital, but they are kept in the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are talking about the archive for, let's say, 50 years, so then uh, it's a really long term. It, it must and consume a lot of space as well. Yeah. And that space must be somehow again like connected to some like uh, energy yeah, and uh, heating like, uh, and everything and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's needed and uh, when we are talking about a switching from paper to digital uh, it's a document flow yeah mm. so uh, the document comes from let's have uh, the basic example of the homework uh, so the, um, uh, the the teacher just distribute the the homework on the paper mm -hmm. then collect them back um, just make uh, uh, some notice on the paper, uh, redistribute it back to the students and collect them back just for archive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, uh, all these processes need to be digitally supported and um, 
yeah really there are some tools used for it uh, but actually have no connection with other things like evaluation uh, like with the with the, uh, the school itself and doesn't go to the archive so it's and like a standalone solutions and they're yeah. not, not connected and yeah. not automated together yeah. and uh, it make a real confusion for the uh, for the teachers because they try their best mm. and I'm pretty sure that they try their best uh, to use this uh, uh, let's say one um, uh, just one purpose tools uh, for this uh, for this uh, task, but mm. uh, actually it it need a complex solution for it, and okay. uh, definitely the way to um, um, just simplify the work uh, it's in the complex system which is uh, connected with the workflow uh, with the, all the processes, mm -hmm. and that's uh, that's the way what we can uh, what we can uh, just uh, uh, show them. Okay, so what's the idea? Yeah, the idea, uh, it's um, uh, the new education for the teacher and uh, help with, uh, uh, with the complex processes, uh, with, uh, with the systems and uh, what's uh, really missing. And we can see it in all other countries, um, including the Czech Republic, that education for the teachers, how to teach, uh, is done during their uni university studies. But mm. afterwards, uh, it's somehow difficult and we can see that uh, the teachers are really hungry how to do so and they are uh, just joining our webinars which uh, we did a lot of them uh, and we introduce really the basics and um, there was uh, there was surprise and there is there is a uh, really missing uh, methodology and uh, the support from the Ministry of Education uh, and all is supported by private companies like Unicornies mm -hmm. and all other companies across the across the country. So uh, this definitely will bring us the better education for the students. So it means um, the teachers are in um, not very um, uh, friendly position yeah, so far. Uh, they uh, having less knowledge than the kids, mm. and uh, therefore they need to improve themselves. Mm. Yeah, let's talk about the experiences. So how we can help the education, how we can help the teachers, and what we can do for them. Okay, let's do it. Um, well, actually, in Unicorn, uh, we think about like three main pillars. Uh, in uh, the terms of digital education. The first is content, the second is system, and the third is experience and practice. Now, um, let's switch the positions, I guess, and take a look into the content pillar. So, uh, as it was already mentioned here at um, uh, previous uh, presentations uh, by previous speakers, uh, what we need to achieve is really to have education available from anywhere, on any device, at any time. Yep. Uh, there may be may one restriction and that's a connection to internet, but that's something like so automatic, that uh, so common that we don't uh, think about it as an obstacle anymore. Yep. Everybody has internet. So uh, it doesn't matter if you want to uh, study either like as an individual or within a school or an organization on your phone, desktop, uh, tablet. We must uh, ensure that all these devices are completely covered. So uh, what uh, we thought of in Unicorn is to uh, provide exactly these kind of applications and really enable anyone on any device to uh, study where they want. Uh, the first like part which we uh, introduced and we will be showing a demo in a minute is an interactive course. And also we need to uh, make sure that there is some dynamic to it. So uh, what really has proven as a good idea is to have educational videos as well. Uh, regarding the uh, courses which are provided by uh, one of the related Unicorn companies, Unicorn Publishing, uh, are Red Monster courses. Uh, they will be also mentioned today. Uh, and uh, with that set, uh, we already have uh, like, uh, I think, hundreds of courses from the uh, elementary schools across high school up to the university. The important thing is that these uh, courses are always made by prof professionals in that area. So usually by teachers regarding like the given subjects or when we have like uh, very academic courses, it's done by the professors. 
Uh, yeah, let me add uh, the one important point because the the courses made by teachers is very very common. Yeah? The internet is full of these examples, and uh, there is a very big difference. It's a quality mm -hmm. uh, because uh, in Unicorn we uh, focus on the quality of these courses, and uh, we just make a review with another professors, and uh, uh, then we really keep uh, the, the the courses have uh, some quality level. Yeah, and uh, that differ us from the uh, hundreds or thousands of courses across the world, uh, which uh, you cannot rely on quality mm -hmm. and you cannot be sure what do you open. And uh, usually uh, there are the, a lot of um, uh, learning materials that uh, they are very poor or not sufficient quality. And uh, that's not uh, not the red monster. Yeah? So the, the quality, it's a, it's a key point. So it's like a collaborative work many people involved to ensure the quality. Um, we already saw some very, very good uh, tools for uh, creating some educational content, for example, from Microsoft and uh, Unicorn has a family of products in this area as well. Uh, we will go, go just uh, briefly through them, but the two main um, uh, products are uh, you course kit and you book it. The first one is for creation of interactive online uh, courses and the second product for uh, creation of interactive uh, textbooks. So let's... Adam, may, may I inter uh, interrupt you? What mean the UU on our beginning? Uh, so oh, what, what, I what see. does it mean? Yeah. That, yeah? Yeah, UU, it's, it's me, me uh -huh. or just <laughs> what, what does it mean? Uh? Yeah, it's it's you and me, me, yeah. but also <laughs> it's Unicorn uh, Universe. And that's basically like an abbreviation for any product that okay. we have within the Unicorn Universe, okay. which is provided uh, through our plus for you service. Yep. Thank you for that question. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's take a um, um, brief look how this could look. For example, we have here a book uh, about uh, macroeconomics. Uh, one of my uh, most like favorite subjects at um, university. I was really an excellent student and I passed it by half a point, you know, wow. so yeah, yeah. So it was a huge success. <laughs> I was so lucky that I didn't have to repeat it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we can see that uh, we, ha we have some uh, book, you know, and uh, everything which you see here are basically uh, is easily editable content made of components and the components can be uh, or basically of any kind you can think of. It can be like uh, these um, equations, you know, there is an, a nice visual edit mode for it. We can have charts, you know, which can be dynamic as well and uh, various charts, you know, everything is drawn right within the system. But what is very interesting that when you, for example, come to the end of the lesson, you can see some uh, task which you could solve by yourself, you know, and think about it. And OK, uh, within the self study, why not to see the solution? But that's, uh, you know, st still not all. By the end of this page, we can see like uh, this box which says, OK, there is macroeconomics and there is some test like regarding the page uh, which I'm studying. And as you can see, I have something like score here, you know, and that means that I already took this test and I scored 81% and I'm able to repeat the test. And suddenly um, it uh, opens me to uh, another application to CourseKit where I'm able to go through a test prepared for this topic, which I have just learned from the book. So, okay, uh, we have like the first question. Uh, and we would choose some specific answer and then I would go through all of these questions and uh, have a final evaluation. But, uh, you what's, know, what's the right answer for that? That's a great question. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you for that. We don't have time for this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> let's go to something like, uh, you know, maybe more likable. Okay. Uh, just very briefly, you know, I like this more, you know, because it's English for like elementary school. And, you know, um, you know, I, I usually usually don't make uh, no mistakes in that <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> because we don't need no education. Right. So uh, <laughs> uh, you can see that uh, we can have uh, various types of uh, of uh, questions and answers. This is like the very you know easy one, uh, just a single choice. So I would go for something like this. Okay, uh, I can see Red Monster animation, which says, "Oh, great job!" You know, thank you, Red Monster. So what else? Another type of question. 
uh, and you can see that really it's about to create the content uh, likable for mm -hmm. the users. In this case, for our children. So it's uh, connected with some animations and with nice pictures and illustration. So uh, basically, uh, this question is about where is Christmas? Well, I guess that uh, Christmas is this. <laughs> You know, uh, it sounds funny when I s say everything in English because yep. then it's obvious, but, uh, you know, this is uh, to uh, actually have the knowledge about uh, basic uh, English words for people who don't speak English yet. Uh, another uh, kind of question, I can connect various like types. So uh, how do we translate uh, some of the main, uh, main um, uh, holidays, let's say? Okay, Halloween was very easy, I okay. would say, yeah. And again, I can see like where I was right. Okay, cool. And I also see some additional information. But you know, sometimes uh, it's not just about the question. The mm -hmm. course is not just set to like uh, be hard and to test you only. It must learn you as well. Mm -hmm. And for this case, we don't only have a question, but also something that we call as a knowledge card. Mm -hmm. And this uh, knowledge card basically introduces some another topic, you know, so we don't always need to go back to some study material and you can learn it during this course and you can decide, OK, I did know, I didn't know. It's up to you. If you say I didn't know, you can then later come back and do it again, you know, so it's for your own good. So let's say that I knew this and uh, now, OK, uh, which of the uh, which of the answers is connected to the picture? Well, uh, OK, it's going to be birthday, I would say celebration. I don't know. Is there some firework in the background? Uh, maybe. No, uh, probably not. Is it wedding? But, you know, we could be lucky in this. OK, this was fine. And now something very difficult, right? Spelling. Yep. Spelling is so difficult for many mm -hmm. people. So anniversary. OK, S-A, S-E, mm -hmm. S-I, wow. double, double R. OK, let's try this. Oh, that, that wasn't the right mm -hmm. answer. And <laughs> The application shows me the right answer and we could go on and on. And by the end, we would have our score and also we would gain some experience and coins. And it will be also mentioned in uh, the next presentation. So uh, I will just now skip the gamification part, but uh, it is included in our products as well. Yep. So uh, that was about the content, uh, the main educational content. And I will just briefly mention one more usage of our ecosystem because everything is uh, connected and that's uh, possible of creation of uh, websites and uh, publishing news. Because, you know, let's say that you are a school, you have a university and you uh, have bought or created some courses and you want to let your teachers and students know that it's available. OK, so for that, you can have a web website, uh, for example, like this one from Unicorn University and also add some news about it, you know, and these are also parts which can be very easily created with our applications. And by the way, you can see, for example, this news article about uh, like a good thing, uh, basically, if you will study our courses and will get some experience uh, that uh, we will um, uh, add some money to some uh, charity for a good thing. Great. So uh, that's the main idea. And now let's take a look at uh, another key uh, concept. Yeah, um, we've been talking about uh, the support uh, for um, uh, for teachers that they are um, really searching how to combine all different uh, platforms together. And um, uh, for that uh, purpose, we, we create a system called Educate. Uh, we are uh, we did it uh, in a cloud in uh, year 2009 and everybody was uh, really wondering that uh, in cloud you will need internet connection. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we are in the year 2021 and everybody has connection and everything is in the cloud. So the, the way it was right, uh, actually, we are uh, we having the schools in four European countries and uh, the main message is to connect uh, the 
school and the family and uh, we still keep uh, it easy for use for teachers yeah, because it's a mandatory uh, the teachers need to work uh, in a difficult condition uh, they have the social interaction with the students they have to prepare themselves they have to live and learn new technologies and they do not need to spend time to to learn how to use the system yeah. so therefore uh, we we are ready to um, they are ready to help uh, or use the educate uh, quite quickly an adaptation time it's uh, just very very short one uh, including the data migra uh, migration it's about uh, five business days that, that's nice actually. yeah yeah. Uh, what we are thinking uh, it's uh, how to motivate the, the students with um, uh, with the using um, uh, the school and uh, it was said uh, the school as a play or as a game mm -hmm. and uh, the kids are just playing the video games and uh, the online games and everything uh, the video games is no more used yeah. so the video games was uh, something very very old-fashioned yeah. so uh, what uh, what the kids are doing uh, they uh, they need to have uh, some uh, new approach from the school uh, to them and uh, this is definitely uh, the way uh, what uh, the learning management system is doing uh, mm -hmm. and uh, moreover we just been thinking all the last year how to motivate the students uh, and how to just bring them to school closer even mm -hmm. they, they've been even to their home yeah yeah, yeah. yeah from their home and uh, how to motivate them and we came to the idea uh, why not to put the gamification into mm -hmm. the educator yeah. so if the uh, smart world is have it uh, if you reach 6,000 steps and then you get mm -hmm. uh, some yeah. award uh, why not to get uh, the award for uh, five good notes in the uh, in the educate why not to get uh, the um, the award for uh, being on time why to not get uh, uh, some uh, award uh, to uh, replying so homework on time about positive motivation only positive, motivation, only positive motivation yeah and uh, uh, there is something behind here yeah, because we are calculating these re uh, awards uh, during the night mm -hmm. and uh, when the kid uh, in the morning they are logging in the educate on their mobile phone they're receiving the award and mm -hmm. the idea behind is that they are going to the school with a smile on their face nice. and uh, just helping the teachers with uh, with a positive motivation yeah yeah so that's uh, that's the way what we are doing and altogether will not be possible without a cooperation with the unicorn university with all of these experiences with all these processes like you said uu course uh, uu book it and all these uh, applications which are standing behind but uh, allowing us to make this uh, uh, these things possible okay so content system experience and skills yeah that's what that's you it. need yeah Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for, for a great presentation. And if I'm heard, so I have several questions mm -hmm. for you. So the first is uh, great because uh, when you were presenting the tests uh, over there, uh, it uh, you know one scenario come to my mind because if you're studying chemistry, uh -huh. you have to be prepared for the lab, right? I, if you enter the lab and you're not educated well, what would happen that day? You can be like uh, uh, kick it off because you can be a threat to other students. Yeah. And usually it is control in a way that uh, uh, teachers are doing tests at the beginning when you enter the lab. And if you are not, uh, uh, you know, well educated in the topic, then you are not allowed to enter. And uh, is it possible to, to, I mean, do it with your tool? Like uh, try to elaborate how would you solve that situation? Okay, so you have it. You have a class. You have a class of teacher uh, students. Sorry, of course they have access to all of you, and uh, then you have to test them. And of course, do not spare so much time on test during the lab because you want to have yeah. as much time actually as it's normally done uh, because the uh, the teachers uh, make a quiz uh, in the system uh, they are limited for the time and uh, the student cannot go uh, for the lab uh, without uh, passing the the quiz yeah so um, everything is online and frank has spoken it allows the students to do the test in the bus let's say mm. and uh, they can do it anywhere and uh, that's something which uh, really 
correspond to the way of living what we are doing and not only students working in the bus yeah? mm -hmm. so we know that uh, you know, even the teachers are working from uh, when they commute from the from the work to home uh, so they they usually uh, assign a notes and uh, making the homeworks and yeah. a beautiful approach with our product uh, with the courses is also that the teachers will have a lot of spare time you know because it's for digital it's automated and they can see immediately results of their students so they don't need to like take the paper and evaluate like each yeah. answer how, how uh, whether it was right or wrong is done automatically so the courses are especially like a nice amendment to like uh, normal study to save the time to, um, to teachers it's great so if you enter the lab you can really ready to go Yep. because you yep. have the list of who can do it and yeah, that, exactly. that's great uh, by the way that maybe leads to another question because if you agreed with students and they are studying uh, studying courses uh, i mean reading your books doing the tests etc and of course if there is an agreement between teacher and students can the teacher i guess see all the you know development of students every particle students have some you know curvature of the, of its uh, you know can, exactly yeah. they can see everything they can even see whether like the student was active you know yeah. by him or herself and maybe that could also bring like another points to the students you know because there is a lock and some students even study like during holidays you know and that's nice like then to see it oh that's great yeah. so rewarded by experiment point uh, to oh. to be active so in, in fact, I, I, without work, I can just uh, assign that, okay, you have to do something at home and then automatically I have some points and don't need I, to do. Exactly, if. exactly. You know, uh, of course, it's always about the people and the teacher is the key element in that. And, you know, the way how the teachers can pass the knowledge in a very like interactive and uh, likable way. And the courses are basically there to help yeah. the teachers. Especially in these times, they were they and it was mentioned at uh, some of the previous presentations. They, uh, because of the um, let's say distance uh, studying and teaching, they needed needed to invest even more time, right? So this is one of the solutions which can spare it, spare their time. Okay, that's very great. Um, I have another question which is from completely opposite uh, side okay. uh, because uh, I, I saw this uh, methodology notes and uh, you know the unicorn is known to have this uh, business approach methodology mm -hmm. which helps it to, to be successful and it seems that you have sort of methodology how to do this uh, very considering somehow to have and, and maybe it's over complication but uh, make it something like franchise and see, I, we, have a, we have a methodology for you and if your high school, elementary school or whatever is following it, we can support it a lot. Yeah, actually, um, the educate is from very beginning, since 2009, developed uh, together with school uh, according to school processes. Yeah, so um, the school uh, doesn't need a franchise, they, yeah. they need uh, just to... Um, uh, look uh, what can help them and uh, if they can see the, the suitable system then uh, uh, the system uh, really represent and uh, absolutely one-to-one -one create the we used to say in the unicorn digital twin of the school yeah so the all the processes like uh, attendance that uh, the school is not uh, presented in the classroom then it goes uh, with, uh, with the absence uh, go to the parent for the for the excuse uh, go back to uh, to the teacher and the teacher just uh, uh, finish it so it's uh, the one of many processes in the in the system and it has been done uh, according the the processes in the, in the school yeah so the the system must represent that and uh, it will simplify the work for the for the teachers okay that's that's great and when one more question for tests, because uh, uh, as far as I have experience with uh, many online tests or many applications have some limitation of what can be the content of the question or yeah. the, on the answer. Mm -hmm. um, well, okay, and I saw that there are many ways you can do it and make it really uh, nice and uh, fun. Uh, are there any limitation or I mean what can be the content I mean can I have a code there or something you can have uh, pretty much anything but it's usually a good practice to have something let's say more closed or more limited um, in case of something like super open questions that means that you know if you have an open question it means that the answer can have any form use many words and then there would be very tricky how to automatically evaluate 
So for these cases, it's better to use um, some like additional tools and some other uh, mechanisms as Educate has to enable uh, the um, uh, teachers to ask these open questions and even evaluate it by themselves. So oh, I see. Uh, these courses are more about like the closed um, automated um, approach, I would say. Okay, so that may be the, the follow-up uh, answer for the next presentation, because we will have a presentation about mi micro-learning. So mm -hmm. I guess this is the part of methodology. We have limitation for time, unfortunately. Yes. So thank you very much for thank your you. presentation. Thanks for having us. Yep. Thank you. And we will move to the next one.